YouTube, what is good? It is a Pizzle Night back again with another video, and it is day number 20 of Video Every Day in October. We made it to day number 20, and um, whew, we got a big one today, folks. Um, me and my buddy Jerome, again, every Monday, looks like it, it looks like it's going to be every Monday thing. Yeah, every Monday thing. Greetings, everybody, and just to confirm what Alex said, yes, not only am I pissed, I'm extremely jealous. Because he saw my favorite match of all time yep. in person. So, yes. Dude. Yes, I did. I did see the um, end of an era, Hell in a Cell match. End of an era, yep. Um, but today, we're going to give you guys our top 10 dream matches. Yes. Matches that should have happened and didn't happen. It's either they, they never happened but should have or something you know you it would never be able to happen due to the time you know due to you know generations and exactly stuff. If you put them together you know it can make a great outcome exactly and, yeah i had this idea i saw a clip on youtube i was like i gotta tell alex like, oh, oh my god great with his uh his uh, video every day in october and he thought it was an amazing Look, idea so it's like why not pull it off yeah i saw the video i was like oh my god oh shit that's genius. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, oh, my God. Um, now, you have some honorable mentions. I really couldn't think of any because I just made this on the fly just now. So, um... Go through these really quick. All right. Just quick, no problem. Um, sorry about that noise. Uh, my honorable mentions are The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase versus JBL. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. CM Punk versus The Macho Man, Randy Savage. Yes. Uh, Kane... When he was awesome, you know, 1997 till like 2003 or four ish. Kane versus Abyss. Oh yeah. The Ultimate Warrior versus Seamus. Hmm. Because they're both yeah. Um, The Rock versus the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Hmm. I almost put that in my top ten. That was close. Um, CM Punk versus Kenta. Kenta Kabashi. Okay, CM Punk is pretty much. Kenta. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, here's a good one. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Eddie Guerrero. Nice. I, I was like, okay, yeah, these are both awesome high flyers, technical wrestlers. Rowdy Roddy Piper versus Dean Ambrose. Oh, that was a good one. Damn I it. was going to say Chris Jericho, but I thought Dean Ambrose would fit the picture. And the last one, Brock Lesnar versus Ken Shamrock. Yes. But yes. yeah, you know, Vagina Face Turd would disagree, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just thought of one, and this is going to be my only honorable mention. Um, Brock Lesnar versus Batista. I, you know what? That was another one I thought of, too. Yeah, because back in, like, 2003, 2004, these guys were hot as hell. Oh, yeah. I, they did wrestle, but it wasn't WWE. It was, uh... It was an OVW, the developmental territory. Just Valley Wrestling, yes. When you were, Batista was the Leviathan. Leviathan, yeah. <laughs> and Brock Lesnar was just Brock Lesnar because they didn't want to give him a gimmick. <laughs> I guess not. And I do have this. This is called, now this is just for shits and giggles, the shit stain dream match. What this is is that, you okay, what this is that, yeah, it'd be interesting to see you, you know, if you put these two people together, but in the end, you know it's going to be fucking garbage. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, you ready? You're going to laugh. Oh, okay. Giant Gonzalez versus the Great Kali. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, he's like seeing these two big behemoths, like, okay, but when you're gonna see them wrestle, it's, it's, oh man. It makes, the, it makes that Gonzalez and Undertaker match look, uh, <laughs> look me. Look, better. five star. Five star <laughs> quality. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, that's my shit stained dream match. <laughs> I just. I was just like, okay, I gotta figure out a, a good pun to go with, so I went with that. So those are my honorable mentions. I don't have a shit stain dream match. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna agree with you, I guess. Shockmaster versus John Cena. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, oh god, you know Shockmaster's better because he's actually hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Cena yeah. isn't. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get on to the top ten. Who wants to start? Um, if you want me to, uh, wait, last time you did the evens and I did the odds. I guess I'll do the evens this time. Okay. Works for me. Okay. My number 10, I could, I've, uh, compared these two many times before and 
we talked about this wrestler a lot last time, and rightfully so. And the other guy is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And seeing these two together in their prime in a typical match is one for the ages. And that is Bray Wyatt versus Mick Foley in a Hell in a Cell or a hardcore match. Wow. Uh, you know, obviously Bray Wyatt, God damn it, he deserves so much better when mm-hmm. he's getting that. that this, and Mick Foley... I'm not sure he should if he should face if Bray Wyatt should face Mankind or Cactus Jack. No, dude, love. No, oh, dude, love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, he's a he, at least he's more of a badass than Fisted Anus. Yeah. But yeah, that's my number ten. I think there isn't too much to explain because the action right there speaks louder than words. So that's my number ten. All right, my number ten is. Um... Kind of strange when you look at it. Um, I said, Jerome, I said to you off camera that one of my um, things was going to really surprise you, catch you off guard. Well, this is it. Vince McMahon (laughs) versus Eric Bischoff versus Paul Heyman in a triple threat match. Oh, that's good. To determine who really was the king of the Attitude Era. And uh, Ted Turner. Oh, uh, no, no billionaire, Ted. It's been the wrestling business. <laughs> I'm in the wrestling business. But, yeah, they, um... See, that, and uh, they were in the ring together at once, which was awesome. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, and, like, one segment backstage, one segment in the ring, which, um, was pretty cool, but, um, you know, back in WCW, um, Bischoff actually called out Vince. Yeah, he did. He not only called him out, like, he, he wanted to... <laughs> he wanted to beat his ass. I beat the shit out of him. Like, Hell yeah. And those and those promos, those vignettes, like, come on, Vince. I'm waiting for you. Come on, Vince. <laughs> you know, realistically, no cape. You know, cape. It's like, isn't Eric Bischoff an actual, like, does he actually train in some form of martial arts? He is, like, I think he is a black belt. That's what I thought. In karate or something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and Vince McMahon, I mean, that dude is a fucking behemoth. That guy's tough He's, as nails. Yeah. But come on, if if you're not calling steroids, then I'm calling bullshit. Because the guy's what sixty some years old now. Yeah. Oh, fuck you, he is. He's massive. He's humongous. He is massive. He's bigger than you, <laughs> probably. Yeah, he is bigger than me. That's crazy. <laughs> fuck is what two sixty? Probably. At he least. Except like a twelve year old girl with them steroids he's taking. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, the three biggest promoters. Back in the Attitude Era. If I had to say who would win, yeah. I mean, okay, if, if you had to put K-Fame aside, who would actually win? Oh, this man would fucking tear the shit out. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Bischoff has that karate aspect about him. But he would treat those guys like foam boats. He would just rip those fuckers in half. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody would get a chance. <laughs> so, um, the smartest one of the three is Paul Heyman. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. Because his psychology will be like, okay, get out of the way. Let, them, let those two fight. <laughs> Save himself for Vince, and then Vince beats the shit out of him. So, um, that's my number 10. That's a good one. Um, coming in at number 9 is a dream match that, um, now, personally, might be good, might not be good. It's, um, two really, really, really compelling characters going at it. Hopefully at WrestleMania, because this match, like, back in, like, say, 2000, would have been, like, a dream match, like a WrestleMania 2000. Had The Undertaker not been injured and had this guy not been with WCW, um, it's The Undertaker versus Raven. Oh, okay. Think about that. Uh, the dead man, The Undertaker, and his whole Ministry of Darkness gimmick with Raven and the flock. Oh, my God. Can you imagine that? How freaking awesome that would be? In the Ministry of Darkness. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Just two very compelling characters going at it. Um, and uh, It's obvious The Undertaker would win it's, it's re- at WrestleMania, but if it weren't at WrestleMania, but, but yeah, but yeah, if it weren't at WrestleMania, I think Raven might have an advantage because he has a much more um, versatile moveset. But um, ultimately, I think um, it would it would have been a great feud, and it should have happened, damn it. It should have freaking happened. Um, well, you know how Raven got treated when you know, they, a lot of WC, or ECW slash WCW guys got treated. That's awful. unfortunate. That's really bad. unfortunate. Um, so, yeah, that's my number nine. 
excellent. My number nine, these two have very, uh, very similar move sets, and one of them I can't say his name. Yeah, you can. Hint. Okay, I'm just you know saying that to warn you, and that is Daniel Bryan versus Chris Benoit. Oh. They both have very similar move sets. They both have you know they both have that high flying skills. And I think they would just match up together to give us one hell of a technical match. Yes. It's kind of similar to uh, Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle at 17. Mm. I think they'll give us something like that. So that is my number nine, Daniel Bryan versus Chris Benoit. Very nice. And I guess I can go to number eight. My number eight, this, oh yeah, this is a big time dream match because these are two two of arguably the greatest tag teams of all time. Mm. Oh, we, oh shoot, I didn't know we could do tag team ones too. Oh shit! No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, and that's fine. These both, these guys, they won. I think they won tag their tag belts in every organization they were in, and mm-hmm. that is the Dudley Boys versus Hawk and Animal of the Road Warriors. Oh, the team. LOD. LOD, and you knew, you know, because the Dudley Boys, they have a, you know, they have a similar move set like the, um, oh, what's the move when he jumps off the top rope and while the other guy has him on his Doomsday shoulders? device. The Doomsday device. It's very similar, except the uh, Warriors had it better because when he hits that far, he just goes, he does a cartwheel, you know. Uh, so yeah, I think that would make an excellent tag match. I would love to see it in a WrestleMania or SummerSlam, you know, in in front of like a huge crowd because that's a match, you know, because like I said, two of the best tag teams of all time, you know, with more gold than. Uh, Shit, more gold than what Vince has, except when he lost seven hundred fifty million. But that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> so that is my number eight. All right, the my... Legion of Doom. Awesome freaking choice. Now, um, my number eight is a match that um, should have had. Well, these two guys were the hottest thing in the Attitude Era. One guy was in WCW, the other guy was in WWF. Oh, I know what you're gonna say. Goldberg. Versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yep. You know, Goldberg put up a ton of money to fight him. And, um, yeah, it should have freaking happened. That should have happened. It should have yeah. happened. It doesn't matter whose show would have been on, WWF or WCW. It would have drawn major, major, major numbers. I mean, they could have done it. Remember what Taz did when he was in uh, WWE? He went into ECW and won the fucking belt. Yeah. From Mike Awesome. That is true. <laughs> So, they could have made that happen. I mean, they were the biggest superstars of the year. Of the Attitude Era. Of the Attitude Period. Era. Period. Period. Um, and it should have happened. That's why it's my number eight. Coming up next, seven through whatever. 